and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where after yesterday's return to the channel of the great Codec, today we bring back Ard van der Weetering from the Netherlands. Ard, of course, is the, the puzzle constructor behind our most popular video. Um, I think that video has been watched something like 9 million times, a Sudoku with only four given digits, which indeed this puzzle has as well, only four given digits and some thermometers. So it is almost beholden on me, I think, to call this video a thermo Sudoku with only four given digits. Um, it's called Can of Worms, and I know nothing about it at all. So uh, Ard's puzzles, they're normally, no, they're not, they're not, they're normally harder than approachable, but not as difficult as, as say, a codec. And that would be a very good way of describing them, and they're always absolutely wonderful. So we'll have a look at this in a moment or two, uh, and I'll read you those rules. Um, do you know that apparently today there might be the, the northern lights might be visible um, in Surrey? which is where I live. Um, this is tremendously exciting to me because I have, you know, my one of my life's ambitions has been to see the Northern Lights. I even took a short holiday to Lapland a few years ago in order to see them and they didn't come out. So, so I'm going to be on Aurora watch today to see whether or not I can drive somewhere this evening and maybe see them. And if I, if I do, I will try and snap a picture and share it with you tomorrow. Wish me luck. Um, Anyway, we've got some birthdays, a couple of birthdays. Ella, Ella, you've turned 18 today, I believe. Uh, your mum, Valerie, wrote to us um, and said that you're an avid puzzler. So uh, congratulations on reaching a very fine age. And I hope, of course, you have lots of chocolate cake today. And then also Sherman, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your, your wife, Amber, wrote to us and she amused me because she wrote rather sardonically, I felt. Um, he watches your videos all day long. No, but then there was a full st full stop. Talks to you too while he's watching. <laughs> so Sherman, good to hear that you're participating in the videos and I hope you have a great birthday today. Um, then what else can we mention? Well, we're very nearly at the start of a new month, which of course means it's Patreon reward time. If you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, um, March's reward is called Alice in Sudoku Land and it is um, a Sudoku hunt that is a collaboration between Panthera, The Asylum, and Montinox. Uh, I think it's got 12 puzzles altogether. And if you solve any three of the puzzles, you'll be eligible to win the competition. Um, so you have to solve any three of the puzzles by the 20th of March to be in with a chance. If you want a shout out on the channel, um, we think that we're going to do a shout out for anyone who can send in the solution to all 12 of the puzzles. What happens when you get to, the, to finish all 12 um, in the first 10 days of March. So we, we rate this, this hunt as slightly easier than the Glum Hippo hunt. And that in turn slightly easier than the, the J Dyer and the Fistamafell hunts that we had before that. So uh, we're looking forward very much to hearing how you get on with Alice in Sudoku Land coming the day after tomorrow. Um, and then from this month, I've still got some successful solvers to read, read out the names of who managed to solve the whole of Glum Hippo's fossil hunt. So very well done to Jed Brewer, Brennan Arsenault, Aaron Spiller, Scott Joss, Oh, Dominic Tudor, I think. I'm not sure about how to pronounce the first name there. Uh, Rich Nicholson, Ollie Martin, Ben Carter, Lane the Pain Train Spencer, <laughs> Jarko Pajuniemi, uh, Andy Mitz, Anthony Okutsu, Rachel Warfield, Peter Reitman, Pella Carlson, Zach Thierman, Manuela Tempestini, and Gabriel Gonzalez. All of you very very well done and excellent solving indeed now let's see what the great Ard van der Weetering has in store for us uh, I love Ard's puzzles and this one the rules are um, rules are well the rules are as follows normal Sudoku rules apply along with thermometers digits must increase from the bulb end so it is a plain pure thermo Sudoku um, so how does this work well let's well, let's use this thermo. That's got a four on it. So this cell has to be higher than four. It doesn't have to be five. It could be it could be six, and then that could be seven, and that could be nine. So that's a legitimate way 
to fill this thermometer because we've just made sure as mercury rises as the temperature rises so much so must our digits rise as we go up along the thermometers do have a go at the puzzle the way to play as usual is to click the link under the video but now i get to play let's get cracking now i know exactly what mr goodliffe would do in this situation uh, he would he would pencil mark these sudokus four five six seven mm, yeah all right i will do the same because there's only three degrees of freedom there or two degrees of freedom depending on how you like to define your degrees of freedom but basically this cell has to be higher than four but it can't be higher than seven because if we did try and make this eight that would have to be at least a nine and then this would be broken because it would be a non-valid sudoku digit um so each of these cells is just one of three things and <laughs> well this one this one is less constrained but still a little bit constrained and therefore ah okay what about three in the middle box then three can't go in those cells by sudoku now it can't go in the tip of a four cell thermometer because obviously if that's a three we go two one zero and that won't work so three has got to be in one of those cells two in box two has to be in one of two positions only because it can't go at the end of a four cell thermometer so if that was a three we'd have a two three pair in box two because again, three can't go at the end of a four cell thermo, thermo either. Um, ah, okay. Uh, bother. Uh, right, so what else is it? What else can we do here? Can we... Okay, I can't put four in these tips either either of these tips won't work with a four because if I, if I do try and put a four in the digit before it will have to be a three because the thermometer is going to have to be a one two three four thermometer um, and you can see that wherever the three lives it would clash with this three so four is in one of those three positions and we've almost got something going on now, haven't we? Oh, it doesn't quite work the same way. I was wondering whether I could dis... Well, I could argue the same that four must be in one of those positions if I made... Oh, that can't be a four. What am I talking about? I'm so not used to going given digits that I just ignore them, it, it seems. Ah, so four... Okay, so four is... Oh, no, that's not good. Four is in one of those three cells. Oh, I was about to get all excited about this possibility of this being a four and where it could go in this box, but that's complete and utter gibberish. Uh, okay, now it now it looks like it's starting to get starting to get harder. I feel there's something going on in box five, I think. But these thermometers and on the same on this side don't look like they do anything really because I can't really what we're looking to do with thermometers is to knock um, knock low digits out of bulbs that's a great thing to do because if you can knock a low digit out of a bulb imagine this couldn't be a one or a two then it uh, no I was about to say it then it couldn't be a three either but it could be a three but then four five six at least we're making these high ah so maybe it's those tips in box two so if this was three four five six so if if these bulbs are three or higher then i get a quadruple in this box but there's no reason well they can't be two so the only way we avoid a quadruple on six, seven, eight, nine in box two is if there is a one in one of those bulbs. But I don't see, I really don't see a reason why I couldn't have a one in one of these bulbs. Uh, 
uh, if well, <laughs> nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing seems to join up. What about? I keep coming back. I think that this little arrangement here looks deliberate to me. So that digit, for example, that can't repeat on its own thermometer. Yeah, OK. OK, I see what's going on here. Right, so this digit and this digit are the digits I want to think about. Because I'm going to claim that one of these digits lives in one of these three cells. Because I think this must be right. Um, if we ask where green goes in this box, it can't go in those cells and it can't go on the end of its own thermo. And it can't be two, three or four. But it can't be two because it's three cells up a thermo and it can't be three or four by Sudoku. So this digit has to live in one of these three cells unless it's there. Now, could it be here? Absolutely it could be. It could be on the tip of this thermo. But if it is on the tip of this thermo, where's that one in box five? I think I've seen a trick like this before. Um, and the answer is that, well, this one can't go there because this is a, we've, we've created a paradox now. <laughs> we've created a paradox in which green is a lower digit than purple on this thermometer but green is a higher digit than th than purple on this thermometer. And those two things cannot both mutually exist, or they cannot exist at the same time. And don't any constructors out there get ideas about this, this sort of thing. So what that tells us, in fact, is that therefore, because these digits are not the same, because they see each other, one of them is on the tip one of them is on the other, so one of those. That, that one of those. I don't know which one, but if if it it could be that one. Those two could both be purple, or those two could be, both be green. But let's imagine. Let's imagine this one was this was the digit that was the same. Then, because this couldn't be purple, purple would move up into one of those squares, where this would become a purple three four triple. And in effect, we could sort of view, we sort of view this as a five cell therm. No, that doesn't work. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, it is true to say that it's not possible now uh, for that digit to be a nine. If, if it was this way round, obviously, which it might not be. Uh, it could be that purple go um, purple goes there, and then green goes up here. Ah, um, right, hang on a minute. Let me just try and get my head around this. So, so if that's green, then this is a maximum of eight. That's a maximum of seven, and seven is the maximum digit. That would join its friends the three and the four in this triple and that logic's symmetrical so seven so these three digits are from three four five six and seven which means one one eight and nine have to be in those cells one can't be in the tip of the thermo right okay so we get a one in one of those cells in box five but eight and nine absolutely could be in the tips of the thermos Wow, okay. <laughs> that was very exciting. Yes, I'm not the guy you want to speak to at parties. Um, but it's done... It's not done what we need it to do. One is in one of those positions. Uh, 
Okay, let me just think about this. Uh, no. Oh, yes, of course. Well, something. Where does 2 go in row 6? And the answer to that is not in those cells and not in the third position along a thermo. So 2, let's make that digit yellow, has to be in one of those positions. Um, which I'll just give a flash to to warn me that that's not, that's a cross box pencil mark, which is a dangerous thing indeed. So if it was this way round, a two would go in one of those. Oh no, okay, I've not got, I'm not, not understanding this, I'm afraid at the moment. There is something, I think, around box five going on, but I can't quite get my head around how to, I've no idea how I'm going to disambiguate which way round this goes, because well, that's a very fair point, isn't it? There is an awful lot of symmetry. If we just draw a... Oh, it won't, maybe it won't let me do it. <laughs> no, it really won't. Oh, I was trying to draw. Oh, there, I can do it like that. There we go. You know, that line of symmetry is very real in this puzzle. If we were to fold the puzzle around that line of symmetry, um, it would everything would touch each other apart from the four and the three would 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 clash so it is a hugely symmetrical piece of work right i've had another idea actually what about ones in this column and ah yes okay okay we might be looking at well, are we looking at our old friend the jellyfish here? Let's have a think about that. Where are, oh, or a squirm bag or something, which is, I think, just an inverted form of a jellyfish. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, one, I'm, I'm thinking about where ones go in these columns, and I'm finding a pretty pattern. So the four ones that belong in columns two, four, six, and eight live in five different rows. That's not good enough. Ah, those two can't be ones because I know that there's a one in one of these two cells in box. Well, I know the one in box five is in one of those two. So those two were invalid. Right. So we would have a jellyfish. If there's no... if th How am I going to show you this? This is complicated. If there is no... If there's a one in box... If the, if the one in box five is there, then those two cells come out from being ones. So they lose their orangeification, and then I would have an interesting pattern because I would have the I would in columns two, four, six, and eight, the four ones that must belong in those columns because each of those columns must have a one in it. And obviously, the reason I've done this highlighting is I can't put one partially along a thermometer because if I try and put a one here, I'd have to put a zero in the bulb, and that won't work. So if if this was a one in box five then the ones in these four columns would have to live in orange and therefore we would know there would be a one in each of the orange cells in each of these rows and that would knock ones out look at that that would knock ones out of all four of those bulbs two so three three four five six so we'll push these up a little bit it doesn't actually push them up dramatically um oh no i don't know i don't i have a feeling that's not possible for some reason if But that, that's all it is. Let's try let's try a different idea. Let's try um nines. Well no, that's the problem is that can be a nine. I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm just gonna have a look at it. Nine. 
nine in those and look at that you're going to get so it must be symmetrical on this side of the grid but no it, does it really work i don't think it does it gets all horrible over there no okay um unless there's a restriction on nines i'm not seeing in the central column Oh, deary me. I'm so sorry about this. Arts puzzles are not, you know, they're not normally <laughs> this hard, uh, which which means it's my fault. I'm not spotting something here. And there's going to be something clever that we've got to do. And I just can't spot what it is. I, I wondered whether it was Ard's um, set thing for a moment there. Ard's, Ard, Ard is behind this pattern. Uh, let me try and show you the relationship between that and that box is is an Ard thing. If you've ever seen that on the channel, but these thermos just just don't work. I don't think with that pattern. So we've got to do. I think it's to do with the middle box somehow. I know I keep coming back to this, but that's what I think it is. I think there's some way we've got to think about how these thermos operate together. I mean, I tell you one thing that it looks like as well. It looks like... You know, the fact that's three and four, it makes me think that that's going to be a two and that's going to be a one. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six up these thermos. I bet there's some reason why we have to... I'm wondering if there's going to be some way of tying those six long thermos together. So in effect, in effect, we can view them as a big long therm thermo string that therefore must have repeated digits on it. How can we do that? This it, it no. I suddenly thought, is is it could it be a knight's move or something? Have I forgotten a rule? But no, this is just very simple. It's, well, very simple rules. It's not very simple to solve. Or is it to do with those bulbs there? If those were, if these were, a th if that was a three and that was a four, so if we don't put one on them, four, five, six, we get a quadruple here. These squares have to be one, two, three, five. That doesn't do anything. I don't think that does anything. Um, how long have I had? 23 minutes. I've got nothing done. I've li I literally have got... That's appalling, isn't it? I've got nothing. I haven't even got a digit. <laughs> um, I don't think it's set. That's the only other thought I'm having now. It's, it's the thought of... Um, a desperate person it doesn't look like it it doesn't f I'd have to put the bulbs in the same hang on let's just how are we going to do this if we try and do this with set we want to put want to put as many bulbs as we can in one color let's put bulbs in that those cells uh, actually, I'm, I'm not sure I wanted to do that. Have I used blue yet? No, I've not used blue. Um, so we'll do it. We'll do it against tips. That's going to be the. That is the most egregious that we can be in terms of our set division. So what's that doing? Sorry, I know that I'm just stopping here and I'm not speaking. That's because I'm trying to just, I'm trying to see whether this is in, even worth um, calculating. 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, that we... All of the... All of the orange cells in those those positions. Um, how am I going to do this? Why am I doing this? Some of you may say if you've not seen set before. Well, um, hang on, hang on a moment. I'm not sure if I want to even talk about this because this is going to waste more time in the video. If I mean, it's there. I think I think it might be worth doing because I think it is fair to say that that the digits that are not on thermometers that are orange have to be low numbers here that's what i feel this is telling me and it might mean that these that are not on thermometers in blue have to be high numbers let me explain what what i'm thinking if um let's come back here why have I highlighted these cells? Well, it's because I was trying to get as many bulbs as I could into, into sets. But what have I highlighted? Well, let me get my Scrabble bag. Hang on. I have highlighted four complete rows of the Sudoku. And although I do not have a clue how the digits are disposed within these four rows, I do know exactly what digits I've highlighted in total because that row of the grid must be the digits one to nine. This row of the grid must be another set of the digits one to nine. So the 36 digits that I've highlighted in blue contain four digit ones, four digit twos, four digit threes, four digit fours, etc., etc., all the way to four digit nines. Now, I want you to imagine that I, for each of those digits, I write them on a Scrabble tile. So that's my that's one of the fives, one of the four fives. That's a two there. I don't know if you can see that. So this Scrabble bag, I am alleging, it may not contain exactly this in real life, but we're going to allege. It's got 36 Scrabble tiles in there, 36 blue Scrabble tiles, and there are four. Four of those tiles have the digit one on, four have the digit two, all the way through to four have the digit nine. That is what I've got in my blue bag. Now, um, let's do the orange. Oh, it's gone. Where's it gone? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, we'll do it. We'll do it that, this way anyway. So these columns I'm now going to highlight. So again, this column, obviously, in the completed grid, it will contain the digits one to nine once each. So these four columns contain four sets of the digits one to nine exactly the same as our blue rows and i'm going to write the orange tiles one in this bag so you can see again this is a scrabble so that's a four so i'm telling you there are 36 scrabble tiles in there there are four digit ones four digit twos all the way through to four digit nines so at this point we could agree so what, what's in my blue bag and what's in my orange bag are the same tiles because we've got four of each digit in there at the moment. Now, if I was to find this digit, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever happens to be in that cell in the finished solution to this puzzle, I'm going to go and fish it out of the blue bag and I'm going to fish it out of the orange bag. Let's do that. Boom, it's gone. What can we now say about the orange and blue bags? Well, hopefully you'll realize that there are now 35 tiles in each bag, but the, the sets of the digits, is the, the tiles, the actual tiles have the same numbers on them still, because we took this digit, whatever it was, out of blue, and we took it out of orange, and, we, they ha and the blue and orange were the same before we took that digit out, so they must still be the same. So these 35 tiles are still the same tiles. And we can do that for every cell that is both colors. Uh, hang on, let me try and get this right. Uh, we're going to mess up some of our um, some of our other highlighting here for a moment, but let, we'll, we'll live with that. So, so having got rid of all of the tiles that have that were in both bags, we reach this position where it looks like we've got 20 tiles left 
in the blue bag and 20 tiles left in the orange bag. But, but to get down to that tw those 20 tiles, we have removed 16 tiles from each bag. And the 16 tiles we've removed were the same numbers. So at this point, what's in the orange bag and the blue bag is still the same. Now that's really interesting. Well, I say it's really interesting. It's at least a little bit interesting in the context of this puzzle because of the thermodynamic that's going on. So if we look at... The reason I think that these orange digits at the bottom have to be low digits is that within each sort of pair of... Um, within each pair of digits along the thermometers, the orange digit is always the higher one. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better way I can explain it than that. You know, that orange digit is higher than that blue digit. That orange digit is higher than that blue digit. So as, as a, if we look at the digits along that thermometer in isolation, we can say that the sum of the orange digits on that thermometer must be two higher at least than the sum of the blue digits. And we can do that for all of the thermometers and they all have that property where the orange digit is on the top side of the blue digit. And the way that this is all going to get equalized is that the these digits will have to be quite low and these blue digits will have to be quite high. Now, there is a two... Uh, There is a two in my blue Scrabble bag as well. Now the two in the blue Scrabble bag well means that there is a two in orange somewhere. Now the two in orange uh, the problem is that could go down here. I was just thinking can I prove that there definitely had to be a two on a thermometer? in which case there would definitely have to be a... Well, then that would mean there would have to be a 1 in blue, and then there would have to be a 1 in orange. Oh, but that could go at the bottom as well. Oh, Bobbin's, Bobbin's face. Yeah, this might have been a fool's errand, I'm afraid, because what, what we're learning here is that the, the geometry of the grid is... It's weighted in favour of orange. <laughs> well, the, th the thermos are weighted in favour of orange. I'm just hang on. Let me just calculate how many, how much higher. I don't think we've, we're anything like enough, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. So, so if we take the digits on the thermos exclusively we can say that the, the, the orange digits on thermos are 16 greater, at least, than the digits in the blue on the thermos. And that means that the digits in that are not on thermos in blue have to be at least 16. Oh, that is it. That's a two. Oh my goodness me. Right, we've done it. <laughs> Half an hour later, we've done it. We've done it. This is very, very... It's, it's magical, actually. That's a magical break-in. Um, I say break-in, but it's... No, I've got a digit now. I've got two digits. I've got at least two digits. Um, wow. Have you got those digits? If you haven't, pause the video and think about what we've been talking about because it's really, really, really cool. It's also really complicated. And it, the, I think the cleverest thing about this is that the only way I really thought about set was I ran out of all other options. I couldn't see how to do it. And then it's often a good tactic if you get completely stuck on a puzzle and you think you've sort of approached it fairly sensibly just as a last resort think it couldn't be set could it now i thought that and then i thought no it can't be set but actually i think it is so what we've worked out just to go through it slowly again is if we were to, to divide each of these thermos 
Well, it's to do with what we said about this thermo. That thermo, we know the orange digits on it are at least two greater than the blue digits on it, because this must be at least one greater than that, and this must be at least one greater than that. So we, we can apply that to all of the sort of, I'll call them dominoes along the thermos. I think there are 16 of them. So 16 is the amount by which the orange digits exceed the blue digits on the thermos. So 16 at least is how many the blue digits have to beat these orange digits by in order to equalize the total. Because we know overall the totals are identical because we know the blue and the orange bag contain the same actual digits. So if we absolutely minimize those squares with one, two, three, and four, that gives us a count of 10 in these orange squares, which means that we need to make these add up to at least, because this is the minimum these can be, these have to be at least 16 greater than 10, which is 26. Well, how can we make these add up to anything other than 26? If we make that a 789 triple, we get 24 plus 2 is 26. That's the most. So we have a, so we're, we're in equilibrium by maxing out blue in the middle column and minimizing these cells here. Now, the reason this has given me a digit, though, is interesting. See if you can see if or did two digits. See if you can work out why. And the reason is that the corollary of everything we've just said is that we can only have an, a precise difference between these squares and these squares of exactly 16. And the only way of achieving that is that each of these... Oh, that, actually, I've just had another thought. That, I'll explain that thought in a moment. But each of these dominoes on the thermos, they have to be one apart. Because if that was six, then we've thrown the whole world into, into disarray. Because now the minimum difference by which orange could beat blue on all the thermos combined would be 17, because we've, we've, we've put a two difference there. And that won't work. But, but the weird thing is, so that forces this to be five, and it forces that to be four. They're my two digits that I saw. But the weird thing <laughs> is that I was sort of then expecting we'd go four, five, six, seven along the thermo, but that's not necessary at all. Because all we need is for this to be one greater than this, and it works. So we don't have to go up linearly. You just have to go up. You just have to do single steps within each little pair along the thermos. It's a really weird idea, this. This is very clever. It's very clever. Um, it's very clever. That digit's restricted by Sudoku now. Because it can't be one, two, three, four, and it can't be seven, eight, or nine, so it's five or six. So what has changed now as the result of the fact that within each domino, within each domino on a thermo, I have to go up by one. Sorry, and I, 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 I appreciate that some of you have probably understood exactly what this means already, but I have not got it yet. At least I've got digits, though. I've got digits. That's not a four. Um... Oh, sorry, I thought this was just going to break the puzzle often with set puzzles once you once you find the, the trick they just break open i can't i can't see how to do it it's going to be oh please brain come on just come up with something seven eight nine here so one three five and six in the column that squares one three or no no okay that squares three or six i hadn't appreciated that it can't be one due to these pencil marks and it can't be five so that's three or six in the middle so one in the central column is either here or here which is absolutely not important 
Oh, I'll tell you something interesting. Those two digits are at least five, aren't they? Yeah, okay, box two. These two digits are at least five. And I say that because they're in the fourth position along thermos and they can't actually be four. So they're at least five. But that means those five digits are at least five. So they are a five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple. I can see something interesting about that, which doesn't seem to do anything. But one of the things that does is it means that's a one, two, three, triple. There seems to have to be a two in one of those. So this is a, a one, two, three, triple. Now, if we look at this quintuple, look, where is the five in that quintuple? And the answer is in one of those two squares. Which means that because we know that whichever whichever one of these is the five, within its domino on its thermo, there's a difference of one. There must be a four in one of those two squares, which is which does absolutely nothing, but it's sort of quite interesting. It also means that whichever one of these is five has quite a low thermo. Oh no, it's got a right. There's a one in one of those squares we've just learned. That's going to put a two in one of these. Oh, this is so beautiful. Good grief. Right. So let me just try and explain. Because I know one of these is a four, I know one of these is, a, is a, at most a three, and therefore one of these is at most a two, but it can't be two. So there must be a one now in one of those squares. But the implication of that, whichever one of these is one, it within its domino, it's going to put a two into one of those squares. So there's a two in one of these squares. <laughs> oh, there's now an X-wing of twos. This is mad. Look, that is an X-wing of twos. What do I mean by an X-wing of twos? Uh, let, actually, we can maybe get rid of my green and purple highlighting. Let me explain. That is an X-wing of twos, by which I mean that the two in this row is in one of those two positions we've just proved. The two in this row is in one of these two positions. So, here's a facetious question to explain X-wings. How many twos do we think there are going to be in column two in the finished puzzle of this? If we finish this puzzle, how many twos are there going to be? Well, the answer, hopefully, you're going to tell me is one. There is only going to be one two in column two, and there is going to be exactly one two. And how many twos are we thinking there are going to be in column eight? Well, there's going to be one, two in column eight. So we've just we've just realized or thought to ourselves there are two twos exactly in columns two and eight. But we also know that there are two twos in those green cells because there's one there and there's one here. So the two twos that live in columns two and eight live in the green cells. So they don't live down there. They cannot be twos anymore which means one of these is a two, which, okay, which forms a sort of meaningless X-wing up at the top there with these squares. So there's an, another X-wing of twos, but that's not going to matter because we, we are not getting more information. This two is already re removing twos from those cells. Okay. Um, Okay, sorry, now I'm stuck again. So one, one of these is a five. Actually, I should pencil mark that, shouldn't I? One of these is a five. So one of these is a one. And the other one it's going to be at least a three, four, five, six. Yeah, which is exactly what we'd expect. Um, uh, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, no. Oh dear, 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 dear. Five. No, 
sorry, I'm not spotting it. I'm not spotting it again. Whatever the clever trick is that I'm meant to be seeing. I'm not seeing it. That's deeply, deeply, deeply distressing. Um, how do I do this? How do I do this, folks? How do we make more? How do I understand this better? <laughs> um, do I have to keep more careful track of the matching digit? So, for example, you know, I could take the approach that, you know, I found a four in blue. And I found a four in orange and I could almost therefore cancel those out somehow um, so that I would keep going through the puzzle. Cancelling digits as, as we went. Is that, an, is that an idea that's worthy of any sort of consideration or not? The other thing I'm wondering about is that this four, I think, is interesting. Oh, that's it. That's it. Right. When I've been looking at these um, uh, bulbs, I've been blithely assuming that I could put a three uh, as a low digit, obviously not in that one, but that one I, I thought could be a three. And it, well, it can be, it can be a three. But, but what I don't think I can do is to put six in these squares, because I know one of these is a five. This is really complicated. I know one of these is a five. Let's just make it that one for the, no, actually I'll make it the other one. I'll make this a five. And we know that's associated with a one here. So my question is, what's the lowest value this can be now? Well, no, that's not really a good question. My question is, is it possible to put six here? And I think the answer is no. Because if I do put six here, I could put five here, but this cannot be a four because of this four. So the, the, this would have to be a three and that doesn't work because I'd have a one, two pair and this needs to be lower than three. So I need more room is, is what, what, what we're learning from this. Um, this four prevents, it prevents this being a five, six pair because we'd need two, we'd need those two digits to be a one, two pair, which they just can't be because of the given two. So that means these cannot be six because we know one of them is five. And that means that that is a six in this, in this quintuple. And if that's a six, we know that's a five. because of this. <laughs> I'm just trying to see what that does. Okay, well, it does do something, actually. That five means there's a five in one of those squares where I seem to have a pencil mark one. So that becomes a one five pair. I know one of the green cells is a two. So these digits now have to be from sixes, sixes, sevens, eights. They can't be nines because they would be, they're only partially along their thermometer. Yeah, they can't be, they can't be one, they can't be two, they can't be three, four, or five. They are at least six. So these two squares are now at least seven, and that gives me a seven, eight, nine triple. Oh, don't turn off my computer, bit defender. Um, so that's a seven, eight, nine triple I've just found here. So these squares are now three, four, and six, I want to say, and that's not able to be six. Has that done anything for us? Come on. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. Oh no, come on. That digit's really under pressure now, actually. Because it can't be one, well, it can be one, but it can't be then two, three, four, or five, and it can't be higher than six, because if it was higher than six, that would be higher than a, two, higher than a nine. So that's one or six. And if it's six, that's seven, eight, nine. Which might be possible. I'm not sure. What about that one? If that one... And see, this one's under less pressure, I think. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's the same. That's under the same pressure. Right, what can this be? It can't be one. Sorry, it can be one. It can't be two. We'll come back to three. I'm going to put three in for a moment. Or six would be the highest it could be. But we've said that if this is three... Yes, that's... Ah, that's... There's an even simpler way of doing this. It's a really simple way of doing this, and I've only just realised what it is. If that's 3, by the thermo logic, which says that there's a 1 difference along dominoes, if that's 3, that's 4. That's the simplest way of seeing it. I, I've complicated this too much for you. I'm so sorry, but I'm trying to juggle a lot of things in my brain, and my brain is letting me down, as usual. Um, right. If we... Um, remembering that... Yeah, I think I could have just got this one six pair straight away. I'm not actually I'm not sure about that. I'm not certain. But I certainly could have eliminated three from those two squares straight away. Um not because of this three, but simply because if you do put a three in there, because we know that the orange digit is one higher than the, the bulb, that would have been a four, and that doesn't work. So this does give me a one six pair, which means that's not a six, which means that's not a seven because we have to step up in ones there. That's not a six, I've got a three, four pair, so I get a six in the middle of the grid, a five at the bottom, a one or a three in this square by Sudoku to match off up here. And Well, here you go, and one of those is a nine. Because, because one of these is a six, that thermo, whichever one it is, is gonna go seven, eight, nine. So one of those is a 9 and one of those is a 5, which means these are a 7, which means they're not 7 and 8. So this is a 5-9 pair. That's an 8 by Sudoku. That's a 7 by Sudoku. That's a 7 by the fact it's got to be 1 less than the 8. That's not a 7. So this is now an odd number because it's got to be, conse one, it's got to be consecutive and a 1 higher than an even number. So that's a 7 or a 9. Um, oh, bar humbug. Come on. Uh, okay, what about where do 8 and 9 go in that row? There's only two places for them to go now. And if this is a 5-9 pair, those two digits are a 4-8 pair because they're, they're, we know that we're stepping down one from these tips to these positions, which means these two squares... Oh, no, it doesn't mean that. I was about... No, okay. No, I was going to say that means these are a 3, 7. It doesn't mean that at all, because we can't step across out of our dominoes, but we can step up one from the 1 and the 6 to give me a 2, 7 pair here. That's fair enough. Right, so one of these thermos goes 6, 7, 8, 9. The other goes 1, 2, 4, 5. Uh, oh, no. Um, okay, and now we get stuck again, do we? <laughs> um, okay, two, six, seven, and eight. No, okay. Ah, come on. Come on. I think we're, get, we're, we're getting closer, aren't we, to understanding the magic that's been instilled or infused into this puzzle i'm going to get rid of all of those pencil marks those corner pencil marks now they are just distracting me i'm probably going to leave the two x-wing in that feels like it's a reasonable thing to leave
whatever that is, that's one less. But I think this isn't under pressure. But a four eight pair there. Nine in this row. There's another X swing look. Nine's got to be in one of those two squares because it can't go in the bulb of a thermo. So there's a those squares are an X swing on nines because nine in this row is in the eight nine pair and in this row is in one of the purple squares. So there's no more nines in any of these squares, which looks like it's not doing anything. Um, Hang on. No, there's no nine in. Oh. No, that well, that is a little bit useful, actually. Because uh, nine in row six now can't go there or there because of the purple X-wing. So that means nine is in there. Which means that's an eight look. So we've got nine and eight. I've got seven. Ah, actually, that is useful. Look. I got a seven here by the virtue of the fact that that couldn't be an eight, apparently. I can't remember. Oh, it's because it had to be consecutive with this. And that becoming a seven means I know that digit now because it's got to be one less than seven. So that becomes a six. So and this becomes a seven because it's got to be one less than eight now. And that is going to do... And all, oh, no, no, I was about to malign that unfairly. That six gives me a digit there, which means that, right, so this is the one, two, four, five um, thermo now, because we know the other, once this is one, we know that's six, and it has to step up in order to keep this down to a minimum. So now, well, now the five does some work. Look, so we can get rid of one from here. One from here comes out. Please. Well, what's going on in this row? We need two and eight by the looks of things. So we've now got an eight X-wing <laughs> between these squares. So eights, I think, in one of those two positions at the top. Yeah, we could have seen that from this thermo as well. That couldn't be eight because that would be made a seven by the logic on these weird thermos. Um, right. What do we do now? What do we do with the drunken sailor? Um, we argue about... Ah! <laughs> uh, is this obvious? Nine is one. Oh yes, it is. Well, it's not obvious, but now I now I think about nine in box eight, it becomes interesting. Nine can't go there because that would be an eight by the weird logic on thermos. So we get a nine down there. So in this column, look, we have not put in the digit six anywhere. That's a two, three, four, triple. So that's a six. That's a five. Can you put five here? That would become a six, which might be possible. Boo! You naughty old puzzle. Um, right, okay. So that's a two. So that gives me a two. Um, oh, okay. So that under unwinds my green X-wing. That, un that unwinds my nine X-wing. Look. Because that became a nine, we know that now the nine in this row has to go onto the other side. So that's something. So now those two digits are a two three pair, I think, which means these two digits are a one nine pair. I don't know if we can do better than that. Maybe two has to live in one of these cells up here, not the middle one by Sudoku. Just using this two pencil mark. And probably this digit then. Should we have a look at this? This has got to be, it's not five, so it could be four. Four or three, it can't be two. So four or three means this is one less. So that's three or two. There's a two, three pair in this column. So now we've got a one, two, three, four quadruple. That square is at least a five on that bulb. It's five or six 
it can't be seven right so it's five or six going up to six or seven because it must step up by one but unfortunately i don't quite know why but that seems to be completely possible um Golly gosh, if you if you attempted this thinking that Ard van der Vatering is normally slightly, sli what did I say, slightly easier than Codec? This has taken me longer than the Codec puzzle yesterday, and it feels very much harder. I mean, it, it's quite brilliant is what it is, but it's definitely, at least for me, unless there was something else that I missed in the beginning, this is a tricky puzzle. This is tricky. Right, there's a seven in one of those squares. Now, can we put seven in the tip? That would become a six. Mm, that looks quite possible, actually. This tiny one here, that can't be that big on the tip because it can't be 9, 8 or 7. So that's a maximum of 6. Uh, which would make that a 5, which again looks possible, I think. If that's not 6, it could be 5. It can't be 5 and 4. It can't be for it just of it in and of itself oh this is this is useful this is in this is forced i think this thermo right how what's the easiest way to show this i don't know if there is an easy way let's just keep counting down digits and seeing whether anything works if we put five here that has to be four that breaks if we put four here it breaks if we put three here this has to be a two which it can't be from this pencil mark and if we put two here that breaks and it can't be one because that's going to be zero so that's six that's five therefore that's seven that's six and now that square is a one or a three ah six by sudoku goes in that square which is moderately interesting sudoku gives us this six There's a 2-4 pair in those two squares by Sudoku, which makes these a 1-3 pair. So in this column, we need 1, 3, and 5 into these cells. But that can't be a 1. And that can't be a 5, actually, by this 5. So there's a, oh, there's a, there is a 1-3 pair, full stop. So that's a 5. That's a 4 using our mathematical trick. That becomes fixed. Can we put 2 there? That would make this a 3. Ah! I think we... I think we can somehow oh you rotten thing well it's true to say that two's in one of those squares but we might not know which way round it goes uh what about where do we think the next place to look is going to be it's probably going to be this row i think one two three and seven now that can't oh where does seven go in the row yes that's a very sensible question it's got to go there so this square is one two or three uh, therefore that square is two three or four i don't believe it it literally has all its options open it uh, it actually does that's quite extraordinary okay um, <laughs> um <laughs> where should we look now we have i think almost used everything up do we know Oh, by Sudoku, there's a 5 there. And that looks like it might be useful because that gives me a 9 as well. So 9 is in one of those two cells. All right, might not be useful. Uh, these squares are 1s, 3s and 8s. feels like that must be resolved, but I, again, I, I'm not quite seeing how. 1, 2, 3 and 8 in this column. Wow, okay. So we need something else. What could it be? What could it be? Oh, there's a three. It's the given digit as usual. I just don't see them. I really don't. For some reason, my brain has conditioned itself not to see, um, not to see black digits. So that's got to be three. That's got to be a one. That's got to be a three. Aha. Eight, one. I've not been looking for threes in the corner at all. I don't know if I've missed any of them. Possibly. Oh, look, it's, it's actually going now. It's deciding to be kind to us. I've got a two, four pair here. So in the bottom row, I need seven, eight, and nine. 
Uh, yeah, that's an eight, therefore, isn't it? Okay, so I've got sevens and nines in the corners. That squares a nine by Sudoku. So nine, seven, eight. Nine must live there. How's this two, three, four getting resolved? Please, please don't be unkind. Oh, this three is doing it. Okay, thank goodness for that. So that's a one, that's a two, that's a four, that's a four, that's a three. That's a three, that's a two, that's a two, that's a seven. Good grief. What a puzzle that is. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> that is, what a can of worms that was, Ard. Is that the longest Ard van der Vatering video that we've ever done? I don't know. I have a feeling Mark did one that was very difficult. I want to say a Dutch whispers puzzle, um, but I might I might be wrong. That's that's definitely I think the hardest um, art puzzle that I've seen, and I think I think it. I mean, I just think it's hard. I mean, even if you get, even if you can somehow, and I don't know how you do this, but let's imagine you're some sort of Rain Man esque genius, and you just look at that grid and go, well, it's set. And I can see the set. And then you do that. And then you spot the trick that makes these a one, two, three, four quadruple, and these a seven, eight, nine. Let's say you do all that instantly. Well done if you did. Um, it still wasn't easy for me to understand how to finish it. <laughs> I def I mean, I used X wings on twos and nines and things. I didn't, I could have maybe got to these two bulbs more quickly by understanding, by ruling out three on the basis of the four here. That would have been a sensible thing to do. But it was still, it's still a fascinating puzzle to solve, even once you've done some fascinating stuff. So it, it was indeed a can of worms and I loved it. And I hope you did too. I hope you had a go. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.